I'm gonna share with you guys my top five species to keep when you're just starting out in the fish keeping hobby. There's a lot of different species we can keep out there in our aquariums, and these are just my top five picks. Some of the things that I took into account when uh, putting together this list. Now, this list is not in any particular order. Actually, the first fish we're gonna talk, or the first fish we're gonna talk about, the Rasbora het, is one of my favorites. So, by no means is it like the fifth best on this list. And I think it falls into a lot of the categories I was looking for. It's a very hardy fish. It's pretty cheap. It's uh, widely available. It's got a pretty cool schooling behavior. And in my opinion, it's a little more unique than some of the uh, more common fish out there. You may have something like a, a neon tetra, a very common fish, great beginner fish. I'm not saying it's not, but I didn't include it on this list simply because, in my opinion, I wanted to give you guys a little more different, unique options. And I think the Rasbora Het is good for a planted tank. It's good in a community tank in general. And in my opinion, it's a really great fish uh, when you're first starting out as a beginner. If you really like that neon tetra, my uh, next fish I want to talk to you guys about, it has that blue and red kind of color, and it's a blue-red Colombian tetra. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I've been sharing pictures of these guys a lot lately. I've got a, a school of six of them across the fish cave over here, and um, they've been a fish that I've been really kind of drawn my eye in the fish cave a lot, that iridescent shine with that red and blue kind of look to them. And I wasn't even gonna talk about them today because they're not, they're not like a rare fish, they're not super expensive, but I had never seen them at a uh, big box store. I've seen them at a local fish store, but never a big box store until yesterday. I saw them at a big box store yesterday for $3.19. So I figured, okay, this is definitely something that I know we can, I know it's easy to keep. Now it's cheap and it seems to be more widely available. I gotta start talking about it more and add it on this list. So Blue Red Colombian Tetra, if you guys haven't checked them out, if you're not aware of them, definitely look into it, do some research. I think it's a great beginner fish. So we talked about two schooling species, but everyone wants that kind of centerpiece fish. And in my opinion, a really good centerpiece fish when you're just starting out is a pearl grommy. Um, it's got that really, like, it's, in my opinion, really unique colors. Um, you don't see it as often as some of the other grommies out there. Um, it gets a little bigger than a dwarf grommie, so it's going to need probably like a 20 gallon or a 29 gallon ideally. And it's a fairly peaceful fish, but it is a grommie, so grommies can have a little bit of a mean streak. So definitely do a little research. Um, they'd probably be fine with those red, blue, Colombian tetras. Maybe good with those rasboras, but um, they may pick on them a little bit. Uh, I'm not trying to throw together a specific one tank, but a lot of these fish should go together pretty well. Another fish that's not on the list, but I want to kind of mention is a, a betta fish. Um, the betta fish, as well as uh, bristlenose plecos and guppies, I didn't include on the list because they're kind of like a neon tetra where they're great beginner fish in my opinion, but once again, they're kind of pretty common. So I'm figuring you guys already know about those. I wanted to share a few more species that maybe were a little more uncommon that people getting into the hobby weren't as familiar with. Um, so drop in the comments down below, what species um, did you keep as a beginner? Or if you're a beginner right now, what species have you found that be really cool and interesting? The next species we're gonna talk about is not actually a fish and that's because it's cherry shrimp. And I wanna make a distinction. I say cherry shrimp, but depending on where you live and really what kind of water you have, whether it's hard water or soft water, you may wanna look at the caridinia species. So something like a crystal red shrimp instead of a cherry shrimp. And I say that because at the end of the day, the best fish or shrimp for you is the one that's gonna work well in your water. Especially when you're a beginner, something to keep into account you know, at the very, very high uh, list of priorities is something that you're gonna, it's gonna match with your water. You don't wanna be mixing water, RO water, you know, as a beginner. That's my opinion, maybe you do. I don't wanna tell you what not to do, or what, what you wanna do. But in my opinion, when you're first starting off, it's easier to get species that work well for your water. So that's why a bunch of these tanks behind me are stocked with cherry shrimp, because I think dwarf shrimp in general are really cool, and it happens out that I have hard water, so I went with cherry shrimp. Um, so my recommendation to you, the fourth species I want to talk about is on dwarf shrimp. They're really cool because they get that breeding action. So guppies are pretty popular. Not that cherry shrimp aren't super popular, but if you want to keep something that's maybe a little different that a lot of people, you know, haven't heard about outside the fish keeping community yet, um, cherry shrimp would be that species for sure. 
I know we're not really putting together a kind of a tank in general, but I had to kind of give you guys a bottom feeder, and they're not just a throwaway because they are one of my favorite fish and something I really want to focus on breeding here in the fish cave in 2019, and that is Cori Dora. And uh, specifically, in my case, panda Cori's, albino Cori's. I want to get into uh, some Sturby Cori's, and there's some other more uh, rare Cori's out there that I, I'll, I'll save for another day. But the bottom line is, Corydora catfish are an awesome species to keep in your aquarium, whether you're a beginner or not. Um, and there's a bunch of different patterns and colors out there to choose from, and for the most of them are pretty easy to care for. So do a little research. My recommendation would be panda Cori's, albino um, albino Cori's, uh, pepper Cori's are awesome. Um, I've kept those all personally. Other good species are some dwarf uh, pygmy Cori's, hybrosis. Now. Corydoras, they don't just stick on the bottom. You'll see them dart up to the top of the water sometimes, or some of those species are known to kind of swim midstream, which is pretty cool to watch. They're all pretty peaceful and get along with most other community fish. Uh, they do need to be fed. A misconception with them, along with most plecos, is kind of like they're just bottom feeders. They eat the algae or whatever left over, but they need to be fed specific food. So definitely look up whatever species you're getting, whether it's gonna be a more protein or vegetarian diet and set yourself up for success. I'm sure a lot of you guys knew some of those species we talked about today, but I hope there were some new ones out there as well. I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, the support at the end of 2018 was amazing and rolling into 2019, it's been strong as well. So thank you so much. Your support for watching, sharing the videos and liking them has been outstanding. As always guys, stay positive and stay passionate.